Hi guys, I am Food by Faith Guarantee Table and welcome to my kitchen. So today we have a couple of projects going on. Right now on the stove, you see my steam canner is up there. On this side in my favorite pot um, that I make my jam jellies and my salsas in. I use this same pot for all of them uh, because it works out really, really well. I have mango salsa that's going in there right now. Those items are getting ready to be canned up, but what we are going to make together is going to be a onion balsamic jam. And this onion balsamic jam is a great way to use the onions that you're growing in your garden. You can use the onion tops as well as the onion bulbs and shallots, of course. So these were picked yesterday and I needed to pick onions yesterday for our mango salsa. And when I went to pick yesterday, I should have brought you guys along, but my apologies. So if you are new here, I am Shaka Faith Thompson. I am a Zone 8A Georgia gardener. I am a cottage food license holder and I just love to cook. Welcome in. Thanks for joining me today as we make this great dish. Hi guys, so we're back right now. I took a little small break. I'm in the process right now, I'm making me a cup of coffee but i took a small break so that i could go ahead and can up the mango salsa it is bubbling away in our steam canner right now and let me get my frother on so again our ingredients for the onion balsamic jam is going to be our green onions, then I have our regular bulb onions, and again, all of it was pulled from the garden on yesterday. I went ahead and chopped up the green onions. I'm going to chop up the bulb portion of the onions. We are going to use, I always use pickling salt whenever I'm canning. So we're gonna use about one and a half teaspoons of that. I keep my syrup in a squeeze bottle. So we're gonna use four tablespoons. And that depends on how sweet you want your onion jam. So you can actually put in more, but I'm only gonna use, I'm gonna start out with four teaspoons. And then of course we have our balsamic vinegar and we're gonna use a half cup of that instead of pectin i am going to use plums so uh, the plums will thicken up our jam as well as add sweetness to our jam and a body so whenever i go to sell this at the market and people taste it and they try to figure out what that extra kind of umami flavor in there it will be the plums and you can do that with a lot of recipes you can omit some things or add some other things into it to give it a different depth of flavor so I have quite a bit of plums here all of it is not going to go into the onion jam we're probably going to only use this bowl for the onion jam and then this bowl right here that I have that is the third project that I'm going to do today and that is plum preserves so I'm gonna make probably about five half pint jars of plum preserves. And plum preserves is very easy to make. You basically cut up your plums, you add your cinnamon, you add your sugar, you add your lemon juice, and you just let it cook down. It's kind of like making apple butter. Um, but it is a project that you can start on your stove and kind of set it and forget it. You can also make it in your crock pot if that's something that you like to use. I do not use any pectin in that as well because as you let it cook down, it thickens on its own. But if you would like to use pectin, you can use the low, no sugar pectin. And just remember, um, whenever you're using pectin, it really thickens things up. So just be mindful of that. 
these are the tools that we'll be using for our canning today my recipe does come from a ball canning guide and it is from the the all new ball book of canning let me show you the book So this is the book that we are going to be using today and the recipe is going to be on page 59 but i am altering the recipe for the flavor that i like okay i am keeping the bones of the recipe because again you always 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 need to have a reputable recipe whenever you are doing canning if you do not have a steam canner like I have, you can use my old method. I had a really big stock pot with a rack in the bottom, or you can use a really big stock pot with your canning rings on the bottom. Anything that will keep your cans from touching the bottom of the pan, of the pot, and then um, make sure it has a lid and it can cover your canning jars. So let's get started. You see that steam canner is bubbling away over there. Can't forget my coffee. Probably shouldn't be drinking coffee in the afternoon, but I love it. So guys, that's my timer telling me that I have run about under a minute left to go on those items. So this recipe is probably going to make about six half pint jars. You can always add more onions if you so choose and because when you look at the recipe in the actual book, it will tell you that you're gonna use two pounds or one kilo of diced onions. But because I do not like to waste anything, I'm using the tops as well. So that is my timer telling me that my mango salsa has been going for the required 10 minutes for my altitude. So I'm gonna turn the timer off and I'm gonna let the pot, the steamer sit. While we get these things cut up. And remember, this does not have to be perfect but you do want everything uniform in size because you want everything to cook at the same time. When I pulled these onions out of the garden yesterday, it was so amazing because what I really was attempting to do was go outside and get one onion, but I had planted them close together. And these were actually the onions that were placed in my garden for pest pressure. So just remember, if you place onions in your garden for pest pressure, don't waste them. You can still use them. And of course, I still have tons of onions growing all at different stages in the garden. And what happened with this one is once I got to the center, I saw a little sand. And just remember that can happen Even after all the washing and scrubbing, 
that was done on yesterday. Okay, that's better. I know that some people worry when it comes to canning. I know that I'm not one who has any desire to pressure can um, because I can't even think of anything that I would want to be pressure canned. Um, I watched, uh, I can't even remember the name of their channel, but they have almost a million subscribers they're out in Alaska and I watched them can salmon and I thought that was pretty cool but outside of that everything else that I grow I'd rather just eat it fresh or freeze it um the different sauces and things that I can I enjoy doing that but as far as canning stuff for extreme long storage. I don't do that. Um, I go through my items. I can them. I cook them. I eat them. I share them. I sell them. Uh, I do not just hold on to things. I know that I have seen on some of the different pages where people, they are canning up items. And they rarely use them. They just really enjoy looking at them on their shelves. Um, that's that's not what I garden for. That's not what um, that's not what I put in all the work for. You know, I love gardening. It is time consuming, but it saves me money. And I know that everything that I get from my little homestead is fresh. I know exactly how long it's been outside. I know exactly how long it's been in the ground. I know exactly how long it's been in storage. Um, I bought going into stores to purchase produce and the produce was dusty. And you're like, what in the world is happening? But that's because the produce was sitting in a warehouse. You know, that happens. So, even though I don't even have a, an acre of land, I'm still capable of growing. And it's the same for you. I mean, I showed you around my columnar apple trees, I actually have sugar snap peas growing right now. And you can do the exact same thing. Guys, also in this recipe, I did it last year. If you do not have any onion bulbs that have grown as of yet, you can use all green onions in this recipe. Or what some people call the onion tops. But I've made onion jam with just the onion tops before. The next thing that we are going to cut up is going to be our plums. I'm not gonna let you sit and suffer through me cutting up those plums. I'm actually gonna fast forward this portion so that you can see what I'm doing, but you don't have to sit through it the entire time. So let me get these plums chopped up and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, I got all the plums that we're gonna use in this recipe chopped up. I have my favorite pot here. We are going to turn it on medium high heat. We are going to add in our diced plums. And this is about three cups of diced plums. <coughs> our green onion tops. Mm. 
Mine is that one. <laughs> that lets you know we are cooking for real. All right, diced onion. We're also going to add in our maple syrup, our salt, and our balsamic vinegar. So we have one half cup balsamic vinegar. Four tablespoons maple syrup. And guys, I forgot to mention that we are actually going to be adding a little sugar in here as well as two cups of water. And you can always substitute that water for a fruit juice. The best fruit juice for canning sometimes is apple juice. So in this recipe, again, you can substitute the water. You can substitute the water for apple juice. The reason why I'm using water today is, of course, because I'm adding fruit into the recipe. We're going to add in our canning salt. Do not use regular salt. Always use canning salt when you're going to be canning. And then I'm going to add in just a little bit of black pepper. We're going to stir this up. And I'm gonna let this cook down for about 15 minutes. When the 15 minutes is up, we're gonna come back. We're gonna add in our sugar as well as our water. We're gonna bring it up to a boil. We already have our jars inside our steamer. We have our mango salsa that we took out of our steamer. So guys, again, we have a lot going on in the kitchen today, but let's work together and we can get it all done. See you in a few minutes. So we're back and everything is cooked down a bit, but what I want to do is before I add my water and my sugar, I have my immersion blender here. And I'm just gonna smooth out some of the larger chunks. And I'm doing this mainly because I want this jam to be spreadable as well as, uh, I want it to be spreadable as well as you be able to add it to different ingredients to either make a marinade or to make a sauce for chicken, meatloaf, pork. And you would even be able to add oil and vinegar and make it into a salad dressing. And as you can see here, this is why I did not have to add any pectin because you can see how thick it is. Now we are going to add our water and our sugar. I'm adding a half cup of sugar and two cups of water.
and we're gonna let this cook down. I'm gonna taste it for seasoning purposes, just to make sure the seasoning is where I would like it. And remember when you're tasting things, make sure you change your spoons if you're tasting more than once and do not taste over the product especially if you're going to be sharing your product. That's good. That's good, y'all. You, if you wanted it a little sweeter, you could go ahead and add a bit more of the maple syrup, but just remember, that for about 10 minutes, this is going to be cooking down so the flavors will condense down. So you may end up with a product that is too sweet. So just kind of be mindful of that. But we're gonna get this cooked down. Then I'm gonna bring you guys back. and we're gonna get it all canned up. So family, we are back. It has been 15 minutes in that time that we were letting our onion jam reduce by half. We chopped up the rest of the plums. What I did was put enough water in to cover the bottom. We're gonna add that to our quick cooker, put the lid on. And we're gonna get that started while we can up our onion jam. And we're gonna let that go in our quick cooker for about 35 minutes. Um, we have our jars here. They are sterilized and they are ready to go. This is what our onion jam is looking like right now. what we are going to do now is get ready to ladle everything up. I'm going to move you guys in kind of at an angle so that you can see exactly what I have going on. Sorry about my dogs barking, but guys, I know that this has been a long day, but this is what happens when you are processing food. It seems like you're in the kitchen forever, but the reason why I like to process food at this time of the day is because it's too hot to do anything in the garden. So even though it's not an extremely hot day, but right now it is about 3.30 um, on a Monday and it's too hot to water, too hot to fertilize. All that right now, I really cannot put any water on the garden until about six o'clock tonight. That way it won't just evaporate. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna to fertilize tonight. I'm gonna to put a little 511 into some super juice and no water the plants. And by the time it gets really good and dark, the soil will have absorbed the water and nothing will just be sitting on the plants. So let's get back to it. We have our salsa here that we canned up earlier. We have our plum preserves going right now. And now we are canning up our onion jam. Family, we are doing it big today. Let's continue on and get this done. So you remember, your jars are sterilized and they are hot. So use your jar lifter. And like I said, our onion jam has reduced down by half. So we're gonna get everything all jarred up and then we're gonna process this for 15 minutes. Thank you. 
Let me bring you in closer so you can see exactly how it's done. If this is your first time dealing with any type of canning, remember, always, always, always start with a ball canning guide because those recipes are tried and true. This is our debubbler as well as headspace measure. Here, I'm not really worried about measuring the headspace because I've been doing it for a little while. All I'm worried about is making sure I debubble and I take a piece of paper towel dipped in vinegar. We're gonna go around the rim. I have a pot over here with my lids. They've been boiling and staying warm because what you want is your warm filling, your warm jar, your warm lid. And you can get all these canning items in one toolkit. or you can buy them separately. I just bought them all as one, one set. And remember, we are going to debubble. I have not done a canning video with you guys in quite a while, and that is why I am taking you step-by-step step with me today. If you want to see how I can a few other things, I do have some shorts as well as some older videos that you can go back through the playlist and watch. So once you clean your rim, you debubble, you put your lid on, make sure you are only putting your lid fingertip tight. You do not want to have it on there extremely tight. And when we say fingertip tight, we're saying in a way that you can loosen it with your fingertips. And the reason why we make sure you clean the rim as well as debubble, and that is so that you get a proper seal on your jar. So even though these have been sitting out here for about an hour, they all have sealed, but I will leave the rings on until tomorrow. So you leave the rings on for a minimum of 24 hours. So I like to make sure I get as many full jars as I can, but then if I can get just a little left over, I use that as my taste tester for the farmer's market because I really like for people to taste what they are getting. It also helps to give them an idea of what else they can use the product for. And that's the same for your everyday cooking. Always, always, always make sure you are tasting what you're cooking. Because if you don't taste it, oh my gosh, how are you gonna know if the flavors are right? How are you gonna know? If you seasoned it enough. So if this doesn't fill this jar to where it's supposed to go, this one I will not can. This one I will use as my taster jar. So this one it is hot. 
I will use as my taster jar because you really want it to be filled to at least right there. And we'll just keep that to the side. Same thing, this is my taster jar of mango jam. And the other day I made chow chow. So we'll get this out of the way. So with all those ingredients, we ended up getting four of our half pint jars. When it comes to your steam canner, if you can see the lid here, we wait until it gets to the green. Once it gets to the green, that is when you start your timer. Do not start your timer before then because you may under process. And as well, when you're making any type of jams, it is possible to over process. And when you over process a jam, the jam becomes very, very thick. But with this one, because it does not have any pectin, pectin in it, we don't have to worry about that, but we're still not gonna over process. So as soon as it gets to the green area for my altitude, I'm gonna put the timer on 10 minutes and we're gonna come back and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. But again, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for bearing with me today, family, because I do want you guys to learn this. I wanted to make sure I took you step by step in how I did things as well as make sure you're cleaning as you go because we use a whole lot of stuff today. Um, we'll be back shortly so that we can finish up our projects for today. So I took the plum jam or plum preserves from out of the quick cooker. It is nice and thick and ready to be canned. I did use the immersion blender to blend up some of the plums, but usually in making preserves, you want to leave it quite chunky because you want to see the fruit in it. So guys, this was our last project. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming along with me. We are finally done. Everything is on the counter waiting. And tomorrow we will take all the lids off, wipe everything down, and get it labeled. Thank you for coming along with me on this long preserving day. And as always, get up, get out, and grow something and have faith in our food. See you the next time. Happy canning, family.